Steve. Thank you very much for the video suggestion, man. I really appreciate it. Not only because you've been supporting my Instagram page and my designs for quite a while, but just the fact that there's a human being out there who's actually coming to me for advice, you know, just means a lot, man. So thank you very much. So to anyone watching out there, I would highly recommend that you go check out Steve's Instagram account. It's just at designed by Stevie. So what he wanted to know was how to match colors and lighting in compositions, which is a great question because there's a lot of YouTube videos um, about how to match color and there's a lot of YouTube videos about how to adjust lighting But there's none that really combine both and show designers how to get the best of both worlds So in this video, I'm going to tell you the most important thing for you to do to match the color and the lighting uh, in your designs and then I'm going to just give you a few more tips on how you can approach that so the first one is to work in black and white and when I say work in black and white, I don't mean make all your designs black and white. I mean when you first start designing, it should be in black and white. And the reason it's important to work in black and white is because it allows you to focus on one thing at a time, which is not only better for your design overall, but also just speeds up your whole process of designing because it takes the two elements of color and light and it just sort of isolates them. So you only have to focus on one thing at a time. The first one being lighting and contrast. So I'm just gonna show you a quick example on my laptop on how working in black and white can actually affect uh, your overall design. All right, so the best way to work in black and white on your laptop um, would actually be to change your color settings to grayscale. So as you can see, I have a Windows and for Windows, it's pretty much just as easy as just searching up grayscale. Um, and this little window should just come up and you can just turn it on and off or use a shortcut it says there, which is just the Windows logo, Control C. And for a Mac, I'm pretty sure it's the same sort of thing. You just need to go to your search bar, search up grayscale, and I think it's in the um, accessibility tab. Um, so it's quite simple. So I'm going to show you right now an example of how working in black and white can actually affect your design. So as you can see, I've got a Photoshop file here and all that's really visible in this composition is just a gray square and you can't see any other elements. But if I turn off the gray scale, there's actually text in the middle. It's literally just because I've introduced color into the equation that you can now see certain elements. And this is just one example of why you should start your designs in black and white, because this is just an example of some typography that just doesn't contrast with the background. And if you didn't isolate lighting and contrast before introducing colors, you would never have noticed this. And you know, this is a really easy fix. All you need to do most of the time is just slightly adjust the lighting of whatever element in your design that you want to pop more and you can increase the lighting more or you can decrease it but it's definitely something that you should pay attention to if you want all the elements in your design to contrast nicely so as you can see all i've made is just a slight adjustment to the exposure and it's already looking a lot better um, it's a very small change but it's just these little subtleties that if you can make them in your design it'll just make certain elements pop a lot better. And it'll just allow you to choose more colors because if you adjust the lighting and contrast beforehand in your design, there's no question that when you add color, it doesn't matter what type of color you add, it's going to contrast nicely because you've already worked on the contrast and the lighting before adding the color. So the two other tips I would give for matching color and light would be to study color theory or at least study the color wheel, um, which you can just search up on Google color wheel and it should come up and there's heaps of different ways to use this wheel to create color schemes and to work with different colors. And just off the top of my head, I think the color schemes you can create with the color wheel are monochromatic, complementary, uh, triad and tetradic. I think there's a few more, but there's heaps of videos on YouTube and there's just heaps of resources out there that teach you how to use a color wheel. So make sure to check that out. Um, and the other thing I'd recommend is to play around with the saturation of colors. Um, I feel like there's a lot of designers out there who just use the primary base colors such as 
red, blue, yellow, green, orange, etc. And they don't take the time to adjust the saturation, um, which can really make quite a big impact um, and actually help contrast different elements in your design. So yeah, I would highly recommend that you um, experiment with a bit of saturation, uh, whether that's increasing it or decreasing it. Depending on if your overall design looks too vibrant, you may want to decrease the saturation. If it's looking a bit dull, um, try and increase the saturation on a few of the elements and just see how that works for you. So they're the three tips that I would give personally on matching colors and lightings in your compositions. And I hope this video has been somewhat informative and I hope it's answered your question, Steve. And if anyone watching this video um, has any questions in regards to graphic design or has any suggestions on what they'd like me to make next, please make sure to leave it in the comments or just send me a direct message on my Instagram account at BJT Production. Um, and I'd be more than happy to answer and help you out with anything you need. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.